Hi everyone, welcome along to episode four of this uh, this series, series three. Uh, this week, a little bit of disruption with uh, the two days of summer that England had at the beginning of this week, um, and a few other things. Work's been quite uh, time consuming; it's been demanding, which I usually was sort of run down, but it's still up here, running along like that. So uh, you know, got to go with that. Can't uh, can't worry about that. So. We'll run through in today's video what I've actually been up to this week. Some interesting stuff, albeit you know not huge amounts. You can see something got a, a paint coat in the background there. So yeah, let's not mess about. I think we should get straight into it. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, let's have a look at what's on the bench. Okay, so uh, it's time to have a look at stuff that's been going on on the bench. Um, as I mentioned in last week's video, uh, England had its two days of summer this uh, this week that's just gone. That meant Monday and Tuesday was a bit hot and then the rest of the week has been um, almost cold. So it was a bit disruptive for modelling, i got to be honest. Things were getting a little bit hot. I came in here and the blooming um, Dornier wing <laughs> had been in 30 plus heat sunshine all day and I thought oh it's gonna have gone like that but it didn't it's all right um so let's start with that where are we well this is the main thing I got done I suppose and again this was only a couple of um a couple of days ago I actually managed to get this sorted so I got the splinter camouflage on and this is uh ROM 65 we'd seen that before as you can see and then um over the top we've gone for ROM 81 and ROM 82 over a splinter pattern that I did just using strips of masking tape just to mark out the area and then I blocked that in. So I sprayed the dark green first, then put the strips to mask the dark green. It's always a bit confusing. Um, it's quite good with Tamiya. Oh, not that anyone's probably going to get this kit, but it does come with a great big sheet, which is almost, it's funny, it's it's far, it's 105%. So, um... It's only just a touch too small. It's almost the, almost the size of it. Um, but anyway, that was fine. Um, got that done. Reasonably pleased, unmasked. Now, there's a couple little things I've got to sort of have a look at, get my eye in with, as it were, and that is the front windscreen. Um, I'm having a bit of an issue there. Not sure why. I think it's something I've done where I've added either the wiring that you can see there or something else I've not quite got right where I've put a, put a couple of bits of etch in here. But it's not going to be a problem. It almost fits. And I think at the very least I'm just going to need to just raise up one side with a piece of plastic card. Um, and we'll see the back portion's open so that's not an issue. Interestingly, I use VMS. It's the only VMS product I use, by the way. Um, other people swear by the products, but um, I've only found one thing that's actually quite good, and that's the um, uh, masking, uh, ma uh, the um, masking fluid, which I use just to help fill in the gaps on some of the um, bits of tape that I used. And there was a blob here and a blob there, and instead of rubbing it off when it was wet, I thought, oh, I let that dry, and I rubbed it off when it was dry, and it peeled the paint off, which um, isn't any fault of the masking fluid it's uh it was my paint preparation so i didn't get something quite right there so i just had to mask that up and redo it i don't think you can really see you might be able to if i catch it in the light it's just a bit of difference there you might be able to see a bit of roughness but i mean you know no one's worrying about that so it's an impressive model it's a nice size and um we're well on the way there uh Really, it's just a bit of tarting up now, and then it will be on to probably decals, and I may, sp I've got a mass set to spray. I may spray some, I may just go for decals. I don't know, I haven't made a decision yet. So that's that one just off to the side. Can't quite get it out of shot. Maybe I can, there we go. Um, started a um, couple of kits. You know when you start a couple of kits, you go, right, I'm all up for this. You get them started, and then you don't do anything to them for a week. So <laughs> I cut off this, the engines. This is a double build. So I cut the engines off for both planes. And that was um, probably a week ago to the day. <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't done anything to it. I just haven't been able to. Uh, work's still a bit um, trying for me at the minute, which uh, 
is unusual, but it'll all settle down. So what I'm doing, finally, he says, I don't know if I ever showed this, um, I bought this boxing of said plane. Plane, is it? No, it's an auto gyro. So I bought this boxing on like creative models, creative, I forget, I haven't used them for so long now, because they sort of stopped doing what they, they used to do like a Thursday discount thing. And they put all these up. So I bought the German one because it's, it's the same kit in a different box. And um, they released every version, even um, some quite obscure ones like the German one, although German stuff sells. And then they didn't release the Spanish one, it being a blooming Spanish plane, until this is two, 2020. This is 2019. But of course, 2020 didn't come out in England until blooming 2022. So I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, it came out and all I really wanted was a set of decals. But the good news is um, because we've got two schemes, two, sorry, we've got two different formations using this. So we've got the Navy and we've got the Spanish Civil War version, which I don't actually think did anything. I know there's a picture of it in the back of a um, airfield, but my understanding is the pilots who could actually fly it were taken out and shot quite quickly as soon as it all kicked off. Um, and then we've got the, this is the School of Observers. So this is more like um, a training school. And then we've got the Navy ones. Now, you can't, I don't know if you can tell. Not you might be able to you might be able to just there these roundels are smaller so on the decal sheet we get two sets of roundels two sets of tail fin what well, you can spray that but you get one anchor so what i can actually do is one of the naval aircraft and one of the school of observers ones it's quite famous photos of these and what i like about these as well is they um spread the uh the time frame so my special interest group, if you don't know, I run the IPMS special interest group for the Spanish Civil War. I don't do it exclusively, as you can tell. Um, but, you know, I like to do a bit here and there, and we always exhibit at Telford, which is obviously on its way. Now, the remit of that, the war is 36 to 39, but I spread the group to 1934 to 1940. So what I like about this is I can do one of my early uh, machines which is before any conflicts even on the cards really debatable but you know what I mean um, so I'm gonna do this one is 1934 and I'm gonna do one of these is 1935 so I'll probably do uh, Y13 here so that's the idea there um, it is a double build um, it's a simple kit really I mean even for mini art they do try and throw everything at it but it's done in 20 what is it? 27 ste 29 steps and we're all done. I mean, that's pretty good going even for mini art. So um, it's really just a fuselage and undercarriage and, a, a you know, a, a, this thing on top. Um, auto gyro, so dry row. So it's got a it's got a pull engine and a digger, 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 digger thing. Um, rotor blades and uh, there you go that's the parts breakdown and that's the decal sheet so you can see two different sizes of roundels obviously spray that that's easy and then we've got the two types of uh, markings and of course on the german decal sheet i've got the instrument panels so that is gonna happen it's gonna be filmed and it's um it's ticking on in the background so uh don't hold your breath basically it'll be ready for telford um but i want to i want to get a start on those at least get them built before I do any projects that aren't related to Telford. Um, I'm not going to do exclusive. Sometimes I do a lot of Spanish stuff all the way down, but I'm not going to do that this year. I've got enough already in the bag. I'm just going to chuck, sprinkle a few new things over, like the Sierras. I've got the Wingsy 109. Um, I've got another plan in mind. Hopefully, I might be able to do. But usually, like it, it dominates my building from now you know, August through to almost deadline, you know, the Thursday before we, we set off on Friday. Uh, Telford is the UK Nationals, if you don't know, so it's the IPMS Nationals, like the ones they just had in America. Um, so it's quite a big deal. Um, I do a table, I've got two tables for the SIG. We've also got the 109 SIG that um, I don't think I've mentioned on the channel, but I run the BF 
109 SIG, if you're interested. That's what these are. The Messerschmitt Smith BF 109. We haven't really had a formal outing yet, but I mean, we will, uh, I expect, we'll be either have our own table next to Spanish Civil War or we will have a little bit of Spanish Civil War table, something like that. So I'll, I'll do like one and a half Spanish Civil War, half 109. See how we get on. I don't know what the bills are looking like yet. This is one I'd like to get over there. Um, got some bells and whistles to throw at this one, as you can see. But anyway, I digress. I told you we'd start talking about Telford. It, it's never too early, I've come to learn. It always feels like it might be too early. And then um, by the time November comes around, um, you know, you wish you had another month. So that's what's going on here at the minute. As far as the channel and specific builds and the um, the out of um, character build that I'm going to do in armour, that's all still on the cards. Probably a couple of weeks away from starting might talk about it, might not. Um, there's plenty for yourselves coming down the line. Like I said, we're going to probably, for the armour guys, we're going to start the Panzer IV F. Uh, for those who forgot, that is this boy, which has done absolutely nothing for a week. However, we're going to see in the next segment where we are. Um, and um, then there'll be the Dornier, and then hopefully roll into either, we we'll do something like the Sievers, or we we'll do... Um, part one of the new project something like that uh, i don't want to keep building up the new project because <laughs> it might not turn out how i envision so ready for the next part and that's just looking at a couple things i have been doing so again in the heat that all i could really do was start thinking about a base so this is the edged base that i'm going to do for the vickers uh, mark IV tank I'm not going to get it because it's a bit out of the way, but basically the Mark IV tank goes here and it fills the scene. We've got, I've painted the figures up. I'll get you those. I've shown you them. So I've just sort of based them in black, rubber black this time. So they're going to go about sort of there on the scene. Tank here. And I think hedgerow. I was in two minds whether I was going to do a, um, a wall or something like that, but I think I'm going to do a hedgerow. So I've kind of put a bit of a, a chamfer on the edge of the, is that the right? Camber, sorry. On the edge of the road there. And then try and go up on a bank and then probably do a, a quite a thick French hedgerow, maybe come up to about this high, uh, probably put branches in and then try and flock that and put other materials on. So I've gone a different way here and I've put the bolster on before actually putting the top on. Um, and then where you've got all these rough gaps, I use wood filler and just sand that back. Um, as you can see, my wood uh, working skills are um, pathetic, really. But it'll all come good. So I think what I'm going to do next is put the um, like the papier-mâché stuff. That's not what it's called. It's um, it's um, got a different name. Uh, I, if you watch the wargaming stuff, that Luke APS... Um, who does Geek Gaming Scenics. He's, got, he's made it himself, so he, he sells it. I think he calls it modelling compound. But it's like a shredded paper that you add water with, and it seems to have PVA in it, and you can sort of spread it around and form um, groundwork quite easily. So I'm going to do that all over, and that will give me the contours of the base, and then we'll move on from there. So that's something I have been working on, and I've also started on the Lancia, and this is worth having a look at. So those of you who will remember this build, Lancia, lovely, lovely kit from Copper State Models. Um, I am going to do a wall here, so that's pretty much why I'm not doing it on the um, uh, Vickers. So this is just bits that were left over. I'm going to make my uh, new clean work surface uh, dirty now. So I've had a go at a wall, which I must say, I mean, it's not done yet. I better wait until I've actually sort of finished it off, but I gotta be honest, this was um, surprisingly easy. I'm gonna come out and say it. Um, it really was. It's just with a pencil. Just think of a wall and draw it. Now the problem I've got now is I've got the texture. I've got kind of weird foam, not probably quite the right stuff, um, and it's got a lot of holes in it. So what I'm gonna do now is mix up with some acrylic paint. Um, like a, it doesn't really matter what colour it's going to be actually it's, and just mix it with some filler so acrylic paint and a little bit of like grout or polyfiller 
just paint that on in a thin mix and I'm hoping that will kind of level off that texture um, and you can see there where it's kind of like a double wall and it's just going to go along the seam like this probably at an angle of a few broken bits of uh, wall there and then we're going to put this with the turret at an angle and we're going to angle everything it's back going back to old Shep Payne's kind of idea it, if you just put everything straight it you lose a bit of interest so I'm going to do it like that with the broken end of the wall a bit of rubble some weeds obviously I've got I can then show some interest on the back here so this will be like a dusty road wall and then a kind of bit of greenery here but it is obviously Spain so you know it's not going to be luscious green grass um, and then I've got an Italian figure have I yes well I've got an Italian figure I like Italian tanks so I've um, got quite a few in you know on the back burner one day life's you know too short at the minute for, for Italian tanks but one day there'll be time uh, so I'm going to utilize one of those figures and then I've got some hornet heads which are of the right um, style for Spain because obviously it's 1936 a bit different for Second World War um, and I'll probably put it you just so the guns on the scene so something like that have the space at the front this was a bit longer but I've cut it back it's all about kind of getting the feel of what's right but that's that's the way the scene's going to be um, and that's something I'm, I'm getting a bit of interest in something just to notice <coughs> on the wall there see when you get the definition correct you see I haven't done it along there yet but um, when you do, because I, I, I haven't filmed all of this, so I want to film the bits where I'm actually doing it. I filmed drawing this in, but now I'm just experimenting, going a bit deeper and trying to add like cracks in and stuff like that. Like you do in natural sort of dry walls. And um, that is all just cut out with a knife. I think it, you know, it, it, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Certainly is a first attempt. Um, I'm quite enjoying these scenes that we're sort of building. Um, so I have a couple of them coming out if you like that sort of thing um, and it's obviously another one for Telford so you see what I mean just just a sprinkling of new stuff just enough to keep a bit of interest so that's what's been going on the bench now um, we need to look at a product which I think is game-changing certainly is for me and so for the last uh, segment we've got a right old mishmash of things going on here um, so I was saying about um, deckling the insignia on figures um, and I'd ordered some well I had I'd ordered two sets but they're the wrong sets um, these are for it's, it says it clearly for the Africa Corps and Waffen SS the Waffen SS um, so these obviously aren't for Panzer crew anyway we'll have a look because there's a there's an important difference now I've bought the correct ones the correct ones if you know there's only two sets there's this set and then there's a set that has uh, one sixteenth um, insignia as well. That's the set with Panzer Crew on it. They both do a bit of Africa Corps. They both do a bit of everything. But the Panzer Crew specific set is either in this boxing, which is that Wehrmacht tank crew, or it is on that other sheet, which I'll have by next week. Uh, now, interestingly, I'm God, I'm getting caught up in here, and I. This is printed by Cartograph. So, so the sets like this, this and the other one with the one sixteenth section, is printed by Cartograph. These that you get in this this figure set are printed by Tamiya. Okay, important difference. So let's look at these Cartograph ones. I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. Very well rendered. No carrier film. Stunning really really well done fantastic stuff that old uh, Blumen SS symbol there that for the old uh, collar um, and you can see the Eagles I mean I'd never be able to paint these the the stuff there for the um, the side caps here you even got some of the um, the like military police stuff sort of the medallions and some of the symbols as well that are like um, go on the shoulder and uh, yes of course here you go if you want to do your das right uh, Deshead, Deutschland, 
Nordland. That's the bloody things that they had go around here. Um, I mean, I will use it. Oh, it's the it's the the SS Eagle as well, which is like that. It's not. It's got like a kind of it goes to a triangle point, whereas the um, normal Eagle goes like that. Those edges. See? See the difference? SS here. Non SS there. Uh, you've got belt buckles. The kind of black collar patches, all the different ones for the uh, different types of um, thingy what's it? <laughs> the um, officers have different kind of numbers of dots here. Um, and you get a little reference sheet on there telling you what everything is, which is helpful. So you get a placement. Well, first off, tells you what everything is. So the Hartman and the Oberst, um, the Leutnant and all that. Uh, going on down here, and it shows you all about this as well. Uh, Panzer Troop type there. And you got um, <laughs> Tottenkopf, Dazdreich. Uh, well, they're all on there, aren't they? <laughs> um, and then you've got the the kind of placement there. You see, which is quite good. That there. Not there. Um, it is. Um, I mean, it's great stuff. I, I'll, I'll use them for for sure. I'll probably have some blooming um, SS lads on some some dio, and um, certainly Africa Corps. I got Panzer Three J and and that sort of thing in in the future. So um, they certainly get used. But I probably wouldn't have bought two sets if I realised. I'm not probably not going to have that many SS troops on my uh, dioramas. Um, then we've got the tank crew. So, so the Wehrmacht tank crew. I didn't really want this. I, I wanted to get on and do it on the weekend. I knew this was up in a local hobby craft. I paid 16 quid for the pleasure. Um, hey, well, I got the decals. I gave them a go and I was happy with that. Now, what we've got here is some fantastic sculpts. Um, I was thinking they were getting near resin. I mean, I, I think, um, not to, uh, we won't, won't ruin it, but I, I think that little chap there is some way, no, they're some way off. I mean, this is, this is our, this is our boy, old um, Hans here. Uh, it's pretty good, isn't it? You know, for, for plastic. This has come on pretty well. It's close. It's close. But it ain't quite resin just yet. Um, and these are of the same calibre. So, I mean, they really are very well rendered. Very well done. Um, fantastic poses. Really great poses. Uh, you, you basically get what's, what's on the front there. So you get two guys looking at a map, and good old classic Tamiya style, your map's there. Uh, you've got some torso figures, and you've got some full figures as well. And you've got different um, uh, different eras, and obviously you can see the, the, the proper lads, the um, commanders, have got the different belts. So it's all, it's all very good. And what I also like is um, how they break down what was going on. Uh, fantastic. It's just Tamir at its absolute best. It's telling you about the piping here. It's sort of 1939. Certain things only happened in 1942. Um, officers had silver cockade and stuff like that. This Iron Cross is for that. This Knight's Cross is for that. The Panzer Badge, etc. Crimea Shield, the Cubans, Cubans Shield. And then it's got your placement on the back there. Really well done. Um, these are the decals. You can see the quality isn't quite as good. You can see the carrier film around and the thickness. And if you look at those those bits there, you see all that extra carrier film. That's just what you get from Tamiya. However, the pleasing thing is they go down fantastically, really well. So just with micro sew and micro set, we were getting this kind of finish. And then I just went on with a bit of solver set. I mean, that's an American product, not easy to get these days in, in the UK. So if you're UK based, any, any strong setting solution, really. But I really am 
pleased with how well that's come out. So obviously once they're all done, not there. I mean, I could never paint like that. It'd be never, never be as crisp as that. Some guy, I know guys can. You know, I've I've seen it done, but I just it's beyond me. And I I don't really want to learn. I nearly said don't care enough. I mean, I care enough. I would put the time in, but I'd really rather just go down this route. As this is open to me, I'd rather just put these on. I, I've got no problems with it. I'm sure some would think it's cheating, but you know that that's their problem, not mine. I just want to um, get figures on the uh, on the kits, and, and off we go because it does improve them. So that's where we are. That 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 will need matting down. So I'm going to go on and finish the face from now on. I can still paint the face, do the hair, do the eyebrows, lips, all that finish off everything else and then we'll mat that down completely and then maybe bring a little bit more sheen in just with oils at the end. So that's how it's looking and that's improving on well that obviously. Uh, and they went they went down no problem. Really happy with them. So there you go. If you're struggling with figures and you want a kind of easy way out, that is your easy way out. The Tamiya Deckle sheets. Uh, highly recommended from me for sure. Right, and now for the last segment, uh, the from the bookshelf, bit of a different one for me. Um, this is the, there's a whole series of books. So whether you like tanks, uh, even one on German infantrymen, all sorts of things and aircraft, um, the Haynes uh, Owner's Workshop Manual series, they sort of gone into these um, more kind of historical books, I guess. It's kind of, I don't know who they're aimed at, but... That, you know they're they're a bit of a winner. Um, you always used to see them. Um, I must admit, it was, I guess it's still happening um, in, in the works. So uh, they were always quite cheap in the works. You can find them in other places as well. And all it really is, it, uh, usually based around a restored aircraft, tank, whatever it is, vehicle, um, which we got here. I'm getting a bit of a problem with glare. We might just have to live with that. I'm afraid. Um, and it really does go through quite well. So I thought we'd pick the old Hurricane because it's um, a bit of an underloved aircraft sometimes. And I think it you know, deserves all the love we can give it, really. Um, and there is one in my near future. Uh, there you are. God blimey. An old ragger in France with the... Um, please someone bring out a 148th uh, caravan set. You know, ICM, if you're listening, just, just do the caravan with this scene. These figures, the dog, the lot, cups of tea. Come on. You know, sell like hotcakes, I promise you. Um, so it usually does quite well running through with a basic history, telling you uh, what's what, prototypes, etc, etc. Uh, and they're usually quite cheap. This is probably only a fiver. This is more of a short, this is a soft back one. It's usually hard covered. Um, just whatever's going really didn't make any odds to me. Um, and if you go through and you read it, it, there's a lot of good information there, really solid research generally um lots of good pictures as well usually ones that have you know been seen many times before it's not really that sort of book it's more of a generalized thing i mean i don't know much about the hurricane this is a source for me to go and start looking at and it was relatively cheap so it didn't break the ba uh, bank balance um, so as you go through we're talking about sort of operational we've got canadian built ones sea hurricanes the development as you go on through Etc. Etc. Little two seater there. If you want to go for a nice, um, a, a nice ride in the sky in um, 1940s Britain, you got the Soviet ones as well. The old biplane version, which is um, uh, slip wing hurricane, was conceived during the Second World War to give hurricane great, greater ferry range for delivery flights. Flights, sorry using a detachable upper auxiliary wing. Thankfully, it uh, was not tried out except in experimental form. Well, there we go. Um, and here's your chaplet, there's Malcolm Lowe. That's um, one of the guys from uh, Paul, um, IPMS Paul. So that's one of his collection. You often see him popping up with his own sort of photo collection in um, Airfix magazine, things like that. Uh, so as we go on through, let's get into the meat of it. Uh, so when we get back here, start talking about the aces. If we got us a uh, bada there by the looks of it. Um, goes into all that. Good talk about that. And then we go on to the engine and then restored to flight. So this is the 
does it say? BBMF's hurricane. It looks like. Um, I'm not too sure on that, but they're obviously rebuilding one there. And then you've got the um, the classic Haynes thing. And then you've still got the breakdown of the internals. I mean, cracking stuff. Look, you see that kind of pink colour, which uh, is the dope colour. You don't often see. See what the interior green is, your red fuel tank, all that. That is the fuel tank, isn't it? Five? Reserve tank. That's the reserve tank. Um, and on we go. And there you are, look. Detail and detail and detail and detail. Lovely shot of the instrument panel. Um, and then we've got the BBMF's um, Hurricanes. It tells you what the history of those is, where they come from, the sort of flight that they're doing. Even the cost, the running cost. Interesting. Um, what's that? Pilot's views. This is what the pilots think of it. And then at the back there, it looks quite interesting. We've got... Uh, a write-up of the um, test flights, by the looks of it. Very nice. Brilliant stuff. So there you go. All very good, interesting stuff and well worth a look for um, cheap books. It certainly used to be. I, I must admit, I think I'm talking pre-pandemic. I don't know if they're around quite like they were before. Um, now, I know the RRP is quite high, 14 99 probably still worth that to be honest but I know you could pick them up quite cheap I don't know what they were doing but um they must have obviously had either a lot left over or did more than they expected interestingly which I never realized it is actually Sparkford in Yeovil that's where it all comes from which is Haynes Motor Museum so who knew there we go hope that's of interest so thanks for staying tuned guys hope you enjoyed that a bit different with the uh the Hurricane Haynes Manual and uh, Dornia behind me. And certainly those um, decals for the figures. I think that's an important an important thing to know about. Whether you actually choose to, to use it or not is, is obviously up to you. But um, it will certainly be something I'll be using going forward. And I've got some Wehrmacht figures as well on a sort of happy coincidence, I suppose. Uh, although I paid for them. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get them. But I'll certainly make use of them. Uh, I'm sure there's many German tanks coming down the line. Uh, so as always, uh, thanks for staying tuned. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel if you just stumble across this one, which is probably unlikely. And um, if you want to support the channel, like I said before, we've got Patreon and uh, links to PayPal and Patreon down below. This Thursday, we will be having... I was going to hopefully get the beginning of the Panzer IV up, but I, don't, I think I'm going to be a bit out of time. So I've got a decal... Um, tutorial where I do pronounce it decal and um, it is just a little bit more advanced just going into a bit more depth from what I did on the Edward um, 109 so we're, it's on about hammering in those decals to actually try and get some of that detail to come through so I think I'll put that one up roll that one out for this week give me a bit of time and then we'll see where we are into next week so um, thanks for staying tuned and I'll see you in the next video